Hey, how's it going everybody? Brad the Guitologist here. Uh, in this video, we're gonna take a look at this thing. This is a DJM 800 professional mixer made by Pioneer. Uh, this is something that I got out of GC's dumpster not all that long ago. I don't know, maybe about a year or so ago. I think it was about right at about the time that the pandemic was first starting up. Uh, or right before that, actually, I had gone into their dumpster and gotten a bunch of stuff out of there. And this was one of the things. And there were a couple of Stanton turntables and some other stuff, man, that it was like a big haul. I'll show you some video clips here. Check this out. Okay. Here, here, here we are at this dumpster right here. Look. Let me show you something. Look. Holy shit, dude. So, what a haul, huh? Two Stantons, a Kurzweil keyboard, bashed up case, about seven microphone stands, a bunch of cables, and, a, and what, three or four of the uh, guitar stands, and then this. And what do I have here? I have no clue. Not a single clue. This was the first thing I grabbed out of there. Yeah, it's a DJ mixer. Pioneer DJM 800 professional mixer. So, you know, this is the one where you fade between them and all that stuff. It's obviously used. It's obviously a used piece of gear, but I wonder if it would work. I mean, it'd be interesting to test it out. Anyway, so there is my trip. There's my trip to the dumpster this week. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Somebody, I guess, had seen that video and they emailed me the other day and asked me about this and if I still had it and if I wanted to get rid of it and if so, how much. I don't even know the state of the thing. I've never tried to plug it in. It has been sitting ever since that time. Who knows what this thing is going to do. This And this is the first time I've actually gotten any kind of a closer look at this. Apparently, these things are pretty expensive when you buy them. And apparently, also, they are kind of the industry standard as far as DJs are concerned. They've got, you know, the AB faders, four-channel mixer here. We've got a couple of different mic inputs. Here's our master volume. We've got a monitor section where we can uh, monitor in the booth. We've got a headphone out directly on the machine. We've got some beat effects right here, which uh, delay, echo, reverb, delay... Uh, several filters like flangers, phasers, robot, <laughs> chorus. So stuff that you could do kind of on the fly when you're doing your DJ stuff. For whatever reason, uh, these four knobs, they probably were used more than any other knobs, I'm guessing. But why? I don't know why. Because they're just the trim for the... They're just the trim pots uh, for the channels. And once you set those, they should be pretty much set. I don't know why they would be the most worn out ones. Because it's not like you should be using those to fade between things. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they were misusing the trim as a volume. <laughs> but you're supposed to use that to set it and forget it, basically. But it looks like they've been used more than anything else. But those are easy enough to replace. It's just some knobs. Uh, and also, the other thing I did notice is that one of these sound color effects buttons, this one, the filter, does not appear to be switching it may be switching, but I just I just don't feel it doing anything with the... Maybe it is. There's a tactile switch there. It feels like maybe it's a bit, I don't know, crudded up or something in there. We might have to, These are working fine. You can hear those working. This one, on the other hand, it... Nah, I can feel it. I can feel it working now, sort of. It wasn't working before, but there's something off about it, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, we may check that out, open the thing up. I want to see what's going on with it. If it's something that I have to repair, I would like to know why it was thrown away. Uh, that would be interesting to know. There's some kind of port here on the side, which is some kind of extension port or something. I should probably get a manual for this and maybe look into it a little bit more. It does look like um, maybe somebody had been into this thing. I, I don't know. We've got a missing screw there, a missing screw there. The rest of them are present. This is not some Chinese piece of junk, and this thing is very hefty. Uh, it's very solidly built. 
And look here. I mean, for sale for, they had $499, $500 on it as a used piece of gear. Used Pioneer, five, 500 bucks. You know, I doubt they just threw away 500 bucks. Something had to have been wrong with it. Maybe it's something simple. I've put 20 volts into it and nothing's happening. It looks like it's periodically drawing a tiny amount of current and then nothing. Okay, now we're getting something. Now we're getting something. We do have something. See there? Okay, so we've got a light. We've got lights. Something. Somebody's home. I can change from, let's see if I change from echo. Yeah. Okay, so something's happening. I'm only dialed up to 72 volts right now, which there will probably be a power regulator in this anyway, and it won't require full voltage to be operational. Uh, but let's go ahead and dial it on up. Just like it would be if we, you know, plugged it directly into the wall. We'll put 120 volts on it. 120 volts, we're drawing 21 and a half watts of power, and it's it's on. It appears to be on. I guess I'll put a microphone in it and plug some headphones into it. Let's see. Wait. Okay. So wait a minute. So that filter switch is blinking. So if I hit it again, it stops blinking. That is being switched. So that switch does work, it's just not as tactile as these other ones. They probably used it more. And the little tactile switch probably needs to be replaced. I mean, let's get a signal in it, I guess. I guess we'll uh, also run a line out uh, from here to the mixer. And the mixer is going directly into this camera, so we'll be able to monitor it from that. This is going to be a real trip if this thing is actually operational. You know, because this, this came out of a dumpster. This might have been a situation where it just was in the store for so long they got tired of looking at it. I don't know, man. Or they just needed to clean out inventory or something. Who knows? And they wrote it off. It could also be a case where they couldn't sell it for what they wanted out of it. And they just wrote it off for the full, you know, used value of the thing and called it broken. And then, you know, took the tax write-off i think they'd probably do that a lot which is why they've taken to locking their dumpster now again so so we've got a signal coming into this check 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 i wonder if it's gonna even check 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 on check check oh there we go ha <laughs> ha look at that so we do have something going into it Master, check, 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 check. What is this? Okay, that is the master level. Check, 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 check. Da, 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 da. Put it into clipping or not. Check, one, two, check, 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 check. Okay, so what we have here is we have a microphone section. Uh, we have two inputs. So you, have a, you can have a mic one and a microphone two. You have independent levels, so you have two channels of microphone here. And just a very simple setup for the these two channels. So you have microphone level one, level two, high and low EQ, and then you have an on-off switch or a talk over switch, which I'm not sure what talk over would be, unless it's mic two. I don't know. I'm not sure. Or talk over that's to talk over the music, perhaps. So that puts the microphone in an on state when perhaps maybe when nothing else is coming through these other channels. I don't know. But you have four other channels here, presumably for different lines. Yeah, you CD signal or line signal. Phono. So that's you could have three turntables coming into this and a CD digital signal. So, I mean, really cool piece of gear if it works. Let's get a line out hang on and, and we'll see if we get signal okay so this is a send and return i guess for like an effects rack this is a left and right uh, output by the look of it these will be your inputs for your for the channels one two three four here are four digital inputs here's a digital output and it could be switched uh 46 48 or 96k we've got a midi out right here as well we have a master 2 out uh, which uses rca we have a record out which uses rca and we also have a master 1 which uses uh, xlr cables i don't have any xlr cables handy so let's go out of master 2 
that's the only RCA cable I have that's going to reach where it needs to go. So let's just use one for now. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. We can definitely hear it. Check one. This thing works. This thing appears to work out of the dumpster yet again. Is anyone surprised, really, honestly, that something in Guitar Center's dumpster would be perfectly fine? Yeah, man, um, it does work. So, again, who is surprised that something out of Guitar Center's dumpster actually ends up working? And I wonder if somebody bought this, possibly, and then brought it back and said, oh, it doesn't work. I should try to get their money back. And then the employees just set it aside and put it in the repair pile or whatever out in the back and just assumed that the guy was right when he said it doesn't work. You know, that, that stuff happens. So you can see right here, filter and then channel select one, two, three, four, and then microphone A, B or MST. Then you've got a parameter and it tells you your tap beats per minute in the milliseconds. But see, I can change the channel with this knob. Maybe I can put it on mic. Check. One, two. Will it work? Check, check, check. Yeah, maybe somebody else can tell me what I'm doing wrong here. I'm just trying to figure out whether or not you can get microphone effects on the microphone using these internal effects. So that's without uh, looking too deeply into this and trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong, looking at the manual. The best I can say for it is the thing it does appear to work. Okay, uh, I have a CD player here. We're going to try playing a CD. I'm not even sure if this thing works. I haven't used this. I found it for free in the garbage. So this might not work either. That's on delay. Okay, now this CD is, we'll give them full credit, Little Sue's New Light. There's a whole story behind um, this CD and the person that sent this to me. And we may get into that in another video. Uh, I wanted to save that story because it kind of touched my heart. So I want to relay that a different way, but we're going to use this for example. So that's delay. So it is working. That's it. Yeah, man. Very cool.